I want to explore a couple of uh, problems that you might run into on a couple of um, the problems here and show you how you can use technology. Most of the time your tables are going to be sufficient and you should be able to get through all of the most of the problems just using the tables that are listed on um, the T table. You can use the T table not only to find the T values when it's necessary, but you can also use them to find the Z values. However, if we have a awkward uh, confidence level and you need to figure out what the critical value is, that can be a bit challenging. A um, couple things to keep in mind. So I, I put up an example here where we're creating a 94% confidence interval. Um, so our confidence level is 94, which is actually a very awkward uh, thing. For the population mean, if a sample of 100, so that 100 there, that's my N, uh, would yield a sample mean of, of 50, so there's my X bar. And the standard deviation, the population standard deviation, is known to be 25. All right, so because we know the population standard deviation, we know that we can use the Z table. Okay. or the Z curve, we should say. <clears throat> now, of course, if you look at your table, 94% is not on uh, the chart. So we're left to figure it out uh, on our own using technology. The idea of a confidence interval, remember, requires that we are cutting off uh, two tail regions so that we can capture a middle region. And in this case, the middle region is made up of 94% of my data. <clears throat> as you can see here, right? So the idea is to ask yourself what is left on the outside. If I have 94% in the middle, uh, what is left on the outside? Well, the complement of 94, of course, is 6%, it's a 0 0.06. However, that 6% is divided up equally between each tail. So we have to divide this by two in order to find the area of each tail, which is what we're going to need if we want to plug this into our calculators, uh, because the calculators always uh, do area to the left. So we see that 0 0.03 is the area in each tail if 6% is the total leftover area in the middle. 94%, sorry, is the area in the middle. We have 6% left out, so we have 3% in each tail. Here is where we would turn to technology to figure this out. Um, grab your calculators. I'm going to pull this in here. I'm going to clear it out, of course. And we want to go to the invert norm function because we're trying to find a boundary value. Uh, so choice number three. A little bit. The area to the left, remember that's what you always want to enter, is 0 0.03, which will mean we'll be uh, given the negative value, which will just remove the negative. The other option would be to put 0.97, which would be the area to the left on the right there. 94 plus 3% in the tail would be 97%. And there we have it. So we see 1.881. I would always round this to three decimal places is uh, the critical value for this test. Um, okay, sorry, I'm changing things here a little bit. So the critical value that's going to capture 94% is negative 1.881 and positive 1.881, right? The critical value really is just 1.881. I would always take your z-value to uh, three decimal places. Most of the problems require that. All right, so then we run into the other problem where we're not given the population standard deviation. And instead, we're just told that the standard deviation of our sample, so the sample standard deviation, is uh, 25, which means Instead of sigma, we've been given s, right? And because of this, this tells us we need to use not the z table, but the t table. 
which, um, yeah, there's a problem. Uh, your calculator also has an invert t function, which functions just like the invert norm. If you look at the same screen, you'll see that choice number four here is invert t. And also, many of you also have tcdf on your uh, calculator below that. Some of you may not if you have an older um, calculator. If you don't, um, what I recommend you do, if you're trying to find an area under a T curve and it's an awkward thing uh, to do sometimes, um, you would need to, this would not be something I would ask you to do on a test, but for a homework problem, you would have to, uh, for a couple of problems, there's a link you can use, but if you just Google uh, T curves, It'll give you, you should be able to find several sites uh, where you can pull up a function that will allow you to find the area. So at any rate, invert T. <clears throat> so for the second problem here, we're, we're going number, what is it, number four. And so we've got an invert T now. Works the exact same way. So on the T curve, Again, we're finding the two boundary values that leave 3% in each tail, 0 0.03. And <clears throat> so my area to the left on the T-curve is 0 0.03. And the degree of freedom is something else that I need to enter, which in this case is 1 less than 100. So 99 is my degree of freedom. We're going to hit Enter. Uh, again and again and again here and it calculates it we see that on the t table even with a hundred there um, which is a fairly good sample we're still off a little bit differently than uh, it's 1.903 <clears throat> so the critical value is slightly different 1.903 and of course negative 1.903 when you're trying to find these these uh, values, these awkward values, um, I highly recommend you just sketch a quick picture so you make sure you're putting the correct uh, area into your calculator because your calculator will won't lie to you, but it will if you give it the wrong information. I hope that helps, um, and that's the conclusion of this little presentation.